part two, and this one's gonna be a sprint. Printing press gives people access to more information. Everyone's writing all their information down and they're gathering together at salons to discuss all their thoughts. Thomas Hobbes supports absolutism because he believes that life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. He lived through the English Civil War, so yeah, I understand. And Locke says that people are actually pretty reasonable and they're all born with rights, natural rights, life, liberty, and property. It's the government's duty to protect those rights, and if the government doesn't protect those rights, it's the duty of the people underneath that government to overthrow it. He advocates for revolution, which is wild. Sarah Beccaria, the Italian, writes in essays on crime and punishment in which she advocates for the punishment fitting the crime. What a radical concept. Montesquieu believes that absolute power corrupts, so instead he advocates for a separation of powers. I don't know, like three branches of government. Mary Wollstonecraft writes on the vindication of the rights of women in which she says that women only appear inferior to men because they lack equal access to education. Go to part three to learn about economics.